Hi, we're back. We ended the last class with uh, a look at these examples from South Africa, and they showed some pretty problematic issues with water availability um, and what happens when a population loses their water source. And I hope you had a chance to watch those videos. Today, what we're going to look at is how we can better manage these water resources. Um, so the greater population has water more consistently. Um, so uh, the concept comes from economics as well. I'm sure everybody's heard of supply and demand. Well, here we're going to look at two types of uh, supply and also the reduction of demand. So the first type of supply that we'll look at is how do you increase your supply? The second will be how do you enhance that supply? To increase the supply, we have a few pictures here that kind of tell the, the tale. Reservoirs can increase the supply. Keep in mind, there are a lot of issues with reservoirs when you look at environmental concerns, um, migratory paths for fish, for example. Um, there's You can artificially recharge uh, groundwater tables and you can harvest rainwater as well, also in these pictures here. Um, another thing to also keep in mind when you see these is uh, LEDCs, lower economically developed countries versus um, MEDCs, more economically developed countries. Managing water at some of these levels only can occur when you have the money to build um, these this technology like dams and rainwater catchment systems. So that's something to consider as, as we move forward. Another thing to look at is rather than building dams, one way would be to think about, well, how do you enhance the water supply? Um, the big example of water enhancement is desalinization. And there's a video, I'll put all these links. These are lots and lots of videos on different projects around the world that really touch into what we're talking about. Uh, so des desalinization is basically taking the salt out of the ocean um, or seas and turning that into fresh usable water uh, either for farming and agriculture or even for drinking. There's also a really interesting project that happened in China. It's, uh, I think the largest water movement on the planet, artificial water movement on the planet. And it's moving water from the south of China to the north of China uh, for the larger cities up in the north. And there's an interesting video on the issues involved with this. You can imagine there's a lot of environmentalists who aren't very happy about this project. Yet, if you're an urban person, you're pretty happy because you're getting a water source. Um, now, we've increased the level of water, but what about looking at it from the other side of this picture? And the important thing to, to consider on the other side is how do you reduce the amount of water that we actually use in the first place so we don't actually need more and we don't have to rely on these crazy big expensive projects? Um, one important thing that a lot of agriculture is looking at is um, using drip irrigation. That's been around for a long time, but on the mass scale, um, and also using other water systems, gray water. So for example, if you take a shower that gets put into uh, a holding tank, gets filtered, and you can use that water for uh, your lawn or watering trees, watering fruits and vegetables, that type of thing. One big aspect of this that we'll look at in our class, uh, in many parts of our class, is um, where the most resource goes to. So an interesting one is beef consumption. I'm sure we've heard about this at this stage. It's been pretty popular uh, in the news for the last few years, is looking at meat, uh, beef in particular, uh, cows in particular, the amount of water needed to raise a cow, have it butchered, and then sent it send it to a market is, is staggering. If you look at this uh, infographic here, and there's lots of data on this out there as well. So reducing our meat, our meat based diet could also reduce a lot of water consumption. Uh, vegans use less water by far, least amount of water by far on this planet, just based on their diet. Um, Economic incentives, um, this could be a governmental, so from the top down, looking at government policies changing um, who uses water and really watching that population. And like I said, gray water, new buildings uh, in a lot of places are putting in gray water systems. Um, 
there's a thing called black water that's coming out of your toilet and that you can't reuse that gets sent into the treatment plants but if you can use the water that goes to the shower and not send it to the treatment plants you save the treatment plant a lot of uh, energy use from just water that should be put in the garden actually if you can just clean the soaps out and uh, th that kind of thing this also ties to the next question that I, I'm going to pose uh, to you guys out there. And the question is, why save water in countries where it seems plentiful? Anybody know where this picture is? Yes, it's Amsterdam. Um, so in, in a country like the Netherlands, it seems like there's a massive water surplus and below sea level, huge rivers moving through the country to get to the ocean um, and canals everywhere but there's still a lot of water conservation issues going on in the Netherlands. People are working on water conservation and it kind of seems uh, counterintuitive. So take 10 minutes, pause this video, try to find an answer to this question. Um, try to discover, like I said in this text here, try to discover reasons to support water conservation in these areas. And when you're done pausing, um, I'll share a little bit in terms of what I found. Um, some, some issues that come up, it comes back to money and carbon dioxide, climate change issues as well, over and over and over again. It costs a lot of money to take water from the source, clean it, put it into the pipes so people can use that water. That costs a lot of money. So if you reduce how much you're using, you save that money and you save those factories from running and running and running and producing carbon dioxide. So you can bring down your emissions as a country if you if you care about climate change, which we hope every country does. Um, then also you flush those toilets all the time and no need, you're just flushing the toilets for fun, just kind of playing the drums on the toilet, flush, flush, flush. All that water goes to a treatment plant, again, the same issue. So a different end of the treatment plant, um, not a source treatment plant, but the end source, end of the treatment um, so you're cleaning out that sewage those sewage treatment plants cost a lot of money to run so you could save money um, also to clean the soaps out of uh, water from from gray water costs a lot of money it's a lot of filtration involved and you reduce uh, co2 if you can reduce the output of your wastewater so that's why you want to think about conserving water in countries, even though it seems plentiful. Even where I live, it seems that there's plentiful water sources, rivers all around. Um, but you're actually putting a lot of strain on the more water that you use. And you can share that with people because a lot of people don't realize that, um, even though they feel like there's so much water there to use. Okay, uh, with this, I'm going to end here. And there's a checklist from this whole topic 4.2. You can pause and look through. This is also on Cognity. And just to flip through to see that we've hit all these um, bits and pieces of 4.2 as we went through. If we haven't, get in touch with me, put a question in the comments, or um, get in touch with me on Zoom or something, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Okay, uh, next time, 4.3, we dive in and we keep looking at water uh, and actually how we're using it in, um, in food production. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.